Let's talk about this next clip. So I was, uh, well, Moose sent it to me. And then I was looking at New York Post for some reason. And this topic of Shaq uh, turning or letting go a $40 million deal with Reebok resurfaced as if it was something new. However, shout out to Earn Your Leisure because they did an interview with Shaq and they broke that way earlier than this past week. So mm -hmm. I found that confusing. But um, this clip has been going around and uh, we want to talk about it. You know what I mean? We want to talk about it. Chewing me a new one. You MFers charging these babies $300 for shoes, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, ma'am, I don't make the price. I apologize. And I had some money in my pocket. I was like, here you go, baby. Go buy your son Jordans, whatever he want. She smacked the money out of my hand. So at that point, I went home and I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I don't feel right charging the kids that want to be us $100, $200 for shoes. I already had a relationship with Walmart. I had another line. So I, I met with the CEO of Walmart. I said, look, I want to I wanna be the number one shoe seller of Walmart. So we did a deal that was in 95. And ever since 95, I've sold over 400 million pair. Mm. Mm. What are we talking about, Moose? Yeah, that's huge. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly becoming a big fan of Shaq, honestly, just the way he does business, the way he approaches life in general. Um, you know, I think everyone heard some stories about how he was uh, in terms of his preparation, whatever, for basketball. But I think he, you can't deny the fact that he was still a very dominant, you know, athlete. But then he's taking that journey into entrepreneurship and, and really a student of the game. So I really enjoyed that entire interview and, and, and much of what he talks about. But I was I really wanted to dive into this piece because there are some people who would, who would receive that type of feedback, especially at his status, and be like, oh, haters, haters are always going to talk, right? Like, uh, whatever, just, just shed it under the, sweep it under the carpet kind of thing, don't need to pay attention to it. But I love about his awareness and his humility to kind of be like, hold up, I don't want to be that guy. Even if that's what our lead is known for, that's what athletes are known for, I don't want to be that guy as well. If you listen a, a little bit after, he talks about knowing the consumer really, really well. And he says, it's not that people don't want to wear shoes from Payless or from Walmart that are inexpensive. They don't want to wear something that doesn't have a name brand tied to it. So he, he kind of was like, all right, let me step out and be that pioneer in a sense to be the first person to be of a big name right like a, have a great brand but still deliver to you an affordable product All right so I, I love just like what he what he represents in terms of how he's doing it from a business side but i also appreciate the fact that someone of his status was able to step back and say nope i'm going to be humble enough and take the feedback and apply it and then look at how you know it's been lucrative for him you talk about 400 million pairs of shoes later, uh, that's, that's huge. That's major. Yeah, and uh, doing some research, and I really love our followers, by the way, because mm -hmm. we got a DM, and it just went very well with this story where even though Shaq uh, left Reebok, left that 400 mil deal that he had and did the whole Walmart situation, just recently, um, he was part of purchasing Reebok from um, from Adidas. So right. in that same EYL interview, and I want you guys to go check that out, um, he was talking about, you know, I, I own the name of, you know, Elvis, Forever 21, uh, Marilyn Monroe, like... I have stake in that that whole group, right? And the group is called Authentic Brand Group, ABG, right? And they just recently bought Reebok for like two billion or something like that, 
which Shaq is a part of. And so now he's somewhat of an owner of the thing mm-hmm. that he left. I think that says a lot because to get to go with a feeling, right? Like just something doesn't feel right. This lady cursed me out, but she does have a valid point. And leave all that on the table like, yo, I'm cool. I'm going to go to Walmart, which some people would have looked at him like, hey, yo, what? Mm-hmm. Why right. would you do that? Um, and then for it to all come back in full circle and make way more than what the deal that you were offered in the beginning for, I think that's that says a lot. I think that yeah. for people who get very distracted with the, you know, the the dangling carrot, like, you never had this before. Hello. This is a lot of money. Um patience is a virtue for a reason. Like mm-hmm. it's like I look at that and I'm like, oh man, I'm good. I'm good at the pace and the decisions because certain things could possibly go full circle. And I and that's what I learned from that particular segment and then these recent movements because it's like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and beyond the numbers, I think, these moves or the strategy behind a move like that will really reveal itself sometime down the line because you mm-hmm. just never know what the true intention of it. So when Dita, when Adidas shed, like cut ties with Reebok, everyone was like, oh, good. Thank God. They're a dying brand anyway. Like yep. finally, they're not even worth that much. But with, with I, I've, always, I've just learned to always take the side of the entrepreneur. Like that's just, that's just been my kind of experience. Like bet on the entrepreneur, they're bound to win just because of their resiliency and their connection to the consumer base. Like they're, they make moves strictly based off of their connection to their community, their culture, their experience. So like if you bet on them and you're someone who enjoys real authentic experiences or just seeing that thing manifest, I think that's always going to pay off. But what I'm saying here is, Somebody like a Shaq might might say, I didn't even acquire Reebok. And I'm just saying, down the line, he might, I won't be surprised if he comes around and says, I didn't acquire them for their shoes or for this or for that. I've acquired them specifically for this thing, and I've been able to use this part of their business to help 10x my business. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, some of these moves, sometimes you don't really see them unfold until uh, some time down the line. So, yeah. you know, in a sense, to, to what you're saying, it definitely is great to be patient because you can fully make sense of the deal at that point because, you know, I, I don't think these guys are, these guys are pretty smart. Like if it's something dying, they're not going to put their money in something that's, you know, that's, that's, that's really not going to be in or they don't know what they're doing. So yeah, I'm, I'd be curious to see what happens in the next, you know, couple of years with something like this and, and how they were able to use different parts of it to grow the overall brand. Big facts. <laughs> <laughs>